welcome to part two of our deep dive into the features of the squid sample. Today we will be continuing to look at its unconventional or more unexpected uses. Previously we looked at how to make several different delay and looping patches. In this video we will explore making wavetable like loops, granular style effects, resampling and chopping drums, sampling and generating sequences and more. As with the previous video, the techniques explored here will require the latest firmware which you can get off the Busy Circuits website. First, let's look at how to create an oscillator, specifically one that can be scanned, sort of like a wavetable. As we can hear, it has a harsher sound. That is just the nature of making an oscillator with this method. We are going to start on one of the three voltage per octave channels so that we have a pitch CV input and coarse tune. Then use an offset to control start, loop and end time to scan the sample. This patch gets a bit specific, but like the delay setup from our last video, once it is created, there are lots of ways it can go. To start, let's queue up a sample and turn on looping. Press the encoder to start playback. We can hear a song begin to play. This will soon become our oscillator. If we want to create a single wave oscillator, we can simply go in and adjust the start and end times. To make the loop very short, hold function and turn the encoder. This will zoom in on the waveform and provide a finer resolution for adjustments. The problem now is that if we want to change the wave or section that is looped, we have to adjust start, end and loop all separately. To scan the sample more easily, we can take advantage of the squid's assignable CV inputs. Here we have an offset created by PAM that is attenuated by the Tangle Quartet. This is patched to CV1 on the squid and will control the scan. First we'll assign CV to control the end time. Simply press the assign button while on the end page. Now we need to remove the gap from our loop length. Hold function and press assign to enter the virtual attenuator for the end time CV. Make sure the offset coming in is at its maximum, then begin to attenuate until the loop plays without a gap. Now we will assign the same CV to start and loop. Since we determined the attenuation for end time should be set to 80, we need to make sure that it is matched with the other two parameters as we want them to move all in tandem. We can see now that the line moves around the sample indicating scanning. The final step is to create a tiny gap between the start and end, like a window for the wave we want to hear. Right now there is no window. We will do this by setting a virtual offset on the end time. Hold function and press the CV1 assign twice. Now we will see an offset page. The moment we set it to 1, a small gap appears, acting as a single wave cycle. Now we've created a single wave sample scan. Use the offset to slide through the entire sample in real time. The final thing to do is match the offset amount on the loop portion as well. Going further, we can easily make synth voices this way by engaging the envelope section. Now we have a pitched voice that can be sequenced. Just make sure it is on channel 6, 7 or 8 for voltage per octave tracking.
We can make the wave even more gritty by reducing sample rate and bit depth. This is the advancement of the patch. The squid oscillator is being sequenced and triggered with some additional drum sounds playing back on other channels. The flexible layout allows the squid to act as several different types of module at once. It will be possible to expand with more oscillators or even patch up with a delay on the remaining channels. Although there is no actual granular engine on the squid sample, it is possible to create sounds of that nature using a similar patch to the wave scanning setup. Here we have just sampled straight in from a phone. Like the previous patch, we are setting up sample scanning by setting start, end and loop, all to a single CV, then attenuating to the correct length and adding a small offset to both end and loop. The key to making this more like granular sample playback is adding a rising saw wave to auto scan the sample. Now it is like the sample is playing normally, but within that playback it loops within the size of the window that was created by the CV offset. It may also be helpful to think of it as sort of a trigger point moved along by the rising saw wave. Going in and changing the loop CV offset will make the window even smaller and sounding like more grains or glitching. If we change the speed of Pamela's rising saw, the scanning will take on a more time stretched type sound. Let's return to offsetting manually. This is essentially the same as the wave scan patch, but can really sound like time stretching with a sample like this. As with many of our other patches, this setup really opens itself up for experimentation. Adjusting loop offsets and attenuation, along with the speed of Pamela's saw, will introduce wild results. There are so many options to explore that the results will likely end up being a nice surprise. Is 
Now we are going to create an oscillator that can discreetly change waveform and pitch using Q sets. To start, we are going to sample some different waves and pitches from Akemi's castle. We are currently only monitoring. Hit record once to arm, then once more to begin sampling. Once that's sampled, we can reset the castle to a sine wave. Press the encoder to listen back to the recording. That sounds good. Let's jump to the Q sets page to start making waves. Hold function and press Qs. We have entered the Q sets page where we can build up to 64 different saved start and end positions. After creating the first Q set, a small number 1 appears on the start and end page, indicating the first set. Let's start to adjust the end time. Turn on loop to start to dial in a single cycle wave. We can zoom for finer adjustment by holding function and turning the program encoder. Earlier, we reset the castle so that we would have a constant pitch reference for creating sets. Hold function and press record to bring the sine wave reference tone back. The zoom display gets very fine for adjusting in tiny increments. This lets us remove any clicks and set our waves to start and end at zero crossings. This first wave sounds good and is relatively in tune with the reference tone. Let's return to Q sets and add a second one. Again, adjust start and end time to taste. Bring back the reference tone periodically to check the tuning. We will continue adding cue sets until the desired amount is reached. In this case, we will make eight. The different sets can be previewed at any time by scrolling through and clicking the encoder on each number. Let's edit number six because it doesn't work well with the others. Now that we have all 8 sets made, we can set CV to move through them. To simply step from 1 to 8, we can once again patch a rising saw wave LFO from PAM. First let's trigger the sample with a clock 8 times faster than the LFO. This matches up with the amount of Q sets and the squid will only load a new set if a trigger is present. Press CV1 assign while on the Q sets page. Now we can patch the rising saw, it immediately comes alive. In this patch, Moving through cue sets in such a manner sounds like a looping sequence for both wave shape and pitch due to the very short loop sizes. If we return to the waveform display we can easily see what is happening. With each clock pulse a new section of the sample is played. Let's add a five step pitch sequence that steps with every two wave changes. We can also add an envelope to the channel to emphasise each step. As usual, continue with your own exploration on how other parameters impact the sound.
let's utilize one of the more recent additions to the firmware, random selection of cue sets. Press the CV assign button to remove the assigned LFO from panel. If we scroll down to the bottom, we arrive at an option for random. Press the encoder once to enable random cue set recall with each trigger pulse. Let's save the channel data to the USB for recalling the full bank of Q sets and the sample. This will let us duplicate all our hard work over to other channels for editing and simultaneous playback. Here we have expanded on the original wave sequence. We have added drums on channel 1 and 2 and loaded up the saved sample and cue sets from earlier to channel 7. At the end of each 5 step loop, Quaid is triggering the pip slope to sweep channel 7's pitch. Now for something unexpected. We can make classic oscillator sync sounds by triggering single cycle waves at audio rates. Let's take a square wave from Sig Guts Deluxe into Channel 7's trigger input. Once it's dialed in, we can sweep the pitch of sample 7 to hear the sync effect. Let's automate it. First we need to attenuate the pip slope, then we can patch a trigger to sweep the pitch again. Finally, let's turn on octave quantization for an interesting tumble stepping with each triggered sweep. Here is an alternate wave sequence with a different cue set. We have duplicated the same set to channel 7 for layering and detuning. The mix output's amplitude is processed by the Tangle Quartet controlled by the Quaid Mega Slope. Here is a slowed down version of the same patch. This technique is great for eerie chords and gritty textures, reminiscent of classic video games. Further processing through a filter or effects would expand on this idea nicely.
Here we have a simple beat made with six quadrature LFOs. We are going to record this beat from the squid back into itself on channel 8. Before recording, let's set up a monitoring patch. We can just patch up a split cable from mix out to record in and another cable to our output. Due to the squid sampling itself, we won't use the internal record monitor or an unintentional comb filtering will occur. As soon as the beat comes around, let's hit record. When finished, preview to make sure it's all there. Now we can unpatch and just work from channel 8. We're going to have to slice up the beat using Q sets, of which we can have up to 64. Each Q set is a unique saved start and end time position. In this case, since the beat works as a loop, we can try using the split function. Enter the Q sets page by holding down function and pressing Qs. Now we can scroll down to where it says split. To start, let's press it four times to create 16 evenly spaced Q sets. Each time split is selected, it will divide the sample into more evenly spaced slices. If we patch a clock to trigger the channel, we can easily skip around the Q sets manually to check them out. Let's hit split one more time to double the amount and half the size of the sections. Now there are 32 Q sets. The slices are sounding good when manually changing them, so it's time to modulate with CV. On the Q sets page, press the CV1 assign. We will patch a rising saw wave LFO to sequentially select a new Q set with each trigger. The cool part about this arrangement is the speed at which we can change the beat. It is very dependent on pitch, triggering rate and how the cue sets are selected. Now let's save this to the USB. We will be able to recall the sample in all the settings of this channel at any time. Press the USB button, choose an empty bank and select save. In this case, we save primarily to duplicate this channel to another. Let's go to channel 7 and again press the USB button. Select load 1 and choose channel 8. Now Squid will load an identical yet independent copy of channel 8 to channel 7. The goal is to trigger channel 7 differently and layer it with the beat playing on channel 8. It actually is sounding pretty nice just layering at the same trigger speed, but with a different pitch and shorter decay time. Here we are expanding the patch with a synth voice based around Sig Guts Deluxe. We have also repatched the output of the drums through the mum mate.
Processing drums like this through a frequency modulated filter can be very rewarding as there is a lot of harmonic material and variance that reacts nicely with a sensitive filter. Let's reassign channel 8's Q set CV to be different from channel 7. In this case, it will still be a rising saw LFO, but twice as fast. Let's also turn off loop and shorten the decay. Let's start to mess around with triggering settings again to change up the beat. It is common to hear a rhythmic dissonance when adjusting settings, but suddenly the beat locks in with certain settings, and the results are almost always interesting. We could have initially created the cue sets manually, aligning them to each hit precisely, but allowing the split function to determine the cuts can add more of a groove to the playback as there are small spaces in some of the slices before their initial hits. In practice, this causes a slight swing or broken sounding beat to occur. Once a patch like this is built up, it can turn into a nice collaboration with the machine. Chopping up existing beats and sequencing them with LFOs can be a great exercise for forming ideas or when you've got a lack of inspiration.
Let's look at perhaps one of the most unexpected abilities of the squid sample, using it to sample and generate CV sequences. We will use some interesting techniques to alter playback and syncing of the sequences. And like most things on the squid, there is a lot of experimentation involved. Let's look how to set this up. This patch involves both Quaid megaslopes being clocked by Pamela. The top one is acting as a transposition sequencer for the bottom. Their mix comes out of the Tangle Quartet into the input on the squid for sampling. Let's arm recording and begin by pressing record and start simultaneously. After a sufficient amount of time has passed, stop the recording. We can always clean up the sequence loop time manually with cues. If we view the wave, we can see a stepped voltage was recorded. It is sent to the 1-2 pair output, which is DC coupled for CV playback. That is connected to the 1 volt per octave of Sigguts Deluxe and Akemi's Castle. Now we can unplug from the input and loop the recorded sample. Press the program encoder once to start playback. This is just the pitch. We will worry about generating a gate signal in a moment. We recorded several passes of the same loop, so it will be easy just to isolate one of them for playback. Since we started right at the top, adjusting the end time is all that is needed. We can zoom in by holding function and turning the program encoder. Timing is key here, so adjust until the loop has no space between the repeats. In the CV domain, the level control will control the pitch of the sequence, since it is altering the amount of voltage sent from the jack. Now it is time to set up gate generation. On the sample quality page, we can find a unique feature to aid in timing of samples. All we have to do is hold function while on the speed parameter and a BPM display will appear. This tells us the sample speed in beats per minute. Right now it's 51 BPM. Let's speed the sequence up until we see 60 BPM appear. We will be generating two gates from Pamela's new workout. One to trigger the CV sample on channel one of the squid and another to fire the envelopes of the synth voice. Let's set Pamela's master clock to 120 BPM two times the speed of our CV sample. Let's turn off looping and patch our first trigger from Pam. The CV sequence is re-triggered before it hits the end time. If the clock being sent is faster, this actually has the effect of shortening the perceived step count of the sequence. It's time to patch the second gate to fire our envelopes. Right now this is a simple 8th note gate to open the VCA at each note change. Now that the gates are patched, the sequence sounds a little off. We can always fine tune the end time or playback speed of the recording. It's helpful to try both, but remember to keep adjustments subtle, since at this stage it requires only the smallest increment of time added or trimmed. Thank you.
adjusting the two gate channels on Pamela really alters the feel of the sequence. It is an interesting approach because the recorded voltage can't totally be changed, but everything around it can. Here is the same CV recording, but with different settings. This was our second look into the deeper functions of the squid sample. We are still constantly finding new ways to use it ourselves and we encourage you to experiment beyond its typical uses. If you haven't seen it, check out our first deep dive video that looks into creating delays and different ways of processing sound with the squid sample. We hope you've enjoyed this squid sample tutorial video. Subscribe to the Busy Circuits YouTube channel and keep an eye on the social media for more videos coming soon.